If you've been following what I call the New Covenant series, you can watch those on the YouTube channel. But we'll go quickly here through a interesting parable in Luke 5. So I'll use the Lucan version. It appears in Mar Matthew and Mark. Ryrie's study Bible has a good footnote here on verse 37. The point is that the new teaching of the grace of Christ cannot be contained within the old forms of the law. And then it gives you there John 1:17. For the law was given through Moses, grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. So this parable, this story of Jesus is obviously about the contrast between the old covenant law that God gave through Moses and then this new system, new covenant law coming through Jesus, the Messiah. And also note verse 36 in the parable, the patches do not match. So the old cannot match this new system that is being introduced. Also note in verse 39, Pharisees preferred the old because that's all they know. That's all they are comfortable with. But Jesus says that the new is always better than the old. And that's true in life, isn't it? If you get a new car, the new car is not going to be better than your old car. Unless obviously you got some sentimental attachment to the old car. But Practically speaking, old things are never better than new things. So this is the moral of the story. I also want to take this a bit further and note the immediate and wider context that shows Jesus is talking about the Torah, that old covenant system. So in the immediate context of chapter 5 in Luke, we see in verses 12 to 26, Jesus breaking purification laws because he's healing people who are sick like lepers and so on these people under that old covenant law of moses system were considered unclean therefore the law of god used to say not to even go near them don't touch them but jesus obviously is touching these people in order to not just heal them but as the greek says in some parts purify them make them clean as well Note verse 14, where Jesus says to one of the people he healed, go to the priest, make the ceremonial offering which Moses commanded as a testimony to them, to Torah observing Jews. So this is not a situation where Jesus says to do that, what was according to Moses, because Jesus is keeping the law of Moses. No, he clearly explicitly says in verse 14 to show them as a testimony to their system, that now perhaps something new has come in. Then we have, in verses 27 to 32, Jesus breaking the food laws. That is, he is shown eating with, quote, sinners. Now, sinners in the Jewish worldview are people who either are ir irreligious Jews, or as we might call them today, backsliding Jews, like we call backsliding Christians. Well, they're only Christians by name, right? So they refuse to follow the Mosaic law. And you can also see the Expositor's Bible commentary on Mark 2, 16, which actually gives that definition of the word sinner. Or it could even be worse. It could be a reference to a Gentile, a non-Jew that Jesus is perhaps having a meal with here. So obviously breaking uh, with the food laws. And then in verses 33 and 34, Jesus is shown breaking fasting laws. Now, there was one specific law regarding fasting, and that had to do with Yom Kippur, I believe, in Leviticus 16. But also in Zechariah 8, it seems that God also recognizes other months, other feasts, when the Jews uh, were also fasting. And God actually, in Zechariah 8, tells them to, if they're going to do that, to do it properly, to do it from the heart. But Jesus here in Luke 5, 33 and 34 says that while he is here on earth, his followers do not fast at all. Now, the wider context, following in Luke 6, the first 11 verses, we see Christians breaking the Sabbath. That is, followers or disciples of Jesus are shown breaking the Sabbath. Remember, they're picking grain out in the fields to eat. And if you can compare the parallel story in Matthew 12, specific to verse 5, Matthew says, they break the Sabbath, yet are innocent. Have you not read this in the law? That is the law of Moses. 
the moral of the parable really is that Jesus mission was not merely to hatch things up that is merely to repair or rehash old covenant system laws but to create a whole new garment a new law which by definition is radically different therefore much better than the old system Jesus says now I'll end with a couple of comments here from again the Expositor's Bible Commentary on Luke 5, 37 and 38. Jesus teaching is like fermenting wine that seems to almost have inherent vigor and cannot be contained within an old rigid system. Later on Jesus will speak of a new covenant which is indeed new and not merely an improved extension of the old. The International Standard Bible Encyclopedia. Whatever else discipleship required, it apparently provided significant freedom from punctilious, that is, meticulous, careful observation of the law, that is, the law of Moses. So things like fasting, Sabbath of servants, the distinction between clean and unclean food. The final norm is no longer the precepts of Moses, but the Lord, that is, the Lord Messiah and his words now this is very key and note the contrast both mark and matthew make between the torah the law of moses and this new improved better radically different law of jesus in matthew 5 18 jesus said for truly i say to you until heaven and earth pass away not an iota a dot will pass from the law until all is accomplished. But then note the contrast almost at the end of the ministry of Jesus. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. In other words, now it is the words of Jesus which are patently different from the words of Moses under the old covenant that the self-professed Christian is supposed to be obedient and follow.